Oh, here. These are some nice scented candles that I thought I could bring along and make everything a little bit prettier. And... No. Why not? Because they're all scented. Oh, they're all scented. Oh, they're all Exactly, brain surgery, you know. Most eight year olds can handle it. Uh, you know what I mean. You seem to have developed a sense of ease in your life. Well, I think most of the credit for that goes to Maureen. You know, just having her here always, or when she was always here, it makes things a lot easier. I wonder if I could be a wife like that. Well, why not? Do you think people become more secure when they get married? Do they have to outgrow it on their own? Or do some people stay insecure forever? What are you talking about, Daniel? He is pressing me about this wedding date. Well, it's not uncommon with fiancés. <laughs> so? He needs something. He needs so much reassurance. You can't give it to him? I've tried. Doesn't seem to help. Nothing I say is enough. And I'm worried about committing to somebody who may want more than I can give. Well, let me ask you something. Does Danielle have any reason to feel insecure? Hmm. Looking for something? I'll find it. Can I help? I think it'll go much faster if I look on my own stuff to talk. Well, is it bigger than a bread park? Special, just a medical journal. Well, sure, I figured it must be small, otherwise, why uh -huh. would you be looking at Mom's sewing bag? What are you doing here in the middle of the day? Well, you may be too busy to notice, but I'm here a lot. This unemployment just goes on and on and on and on. What are you doing? Oh, don't mind me. Search on. Maybe it's in the bedroom. Power tool 
Hello? You don't seem the type. Well, looks can be deceiving. What were you... Shouldn't you be looking for your journal? Who are you afraid of? It would make Daniel insecure, but... Oh, let's face it. There are things in my life that would be hard for any man. You mean Roger? And I want this to work, and I really do. Well, what a wonderful place to start. I mean, you know Daniel loves you. I mm, know, but this Roger person has him all on edge. And he, and he needs reassurance? Oh, I gotta hide something. And I just, I just wonder if I'm, I'm making it worse. Honey, look. Daniel has spent most of his adult life hunched over a microscope. I mean... You know, he lives, he lives in the lab. All the rest of this stuff is brand new to him. The other women? But no one that he's wanted to commit the rest of his life to. I mean, what, and, and now with his running the department and taking care of his patients and doing his research, I... Oh, he gave that up? What the, exactly. Y yes. You're saying he's more committed to this than I am. I am saying that he is a particular kind of person. Now, surely you must have been aware of this before. Yes, I guess. I mean, are you, are you feeling that you're, you're being rushed into this now? Or, or? Maybe it's different. Or maybe I am. Um, maybe I'm anxious about losing my independence. I just feel like he's playing me sometimes, like there's going to be nothing left for me. Oh, honey, that's very tricky. I mean, knowing exactly how much of ourselves, you know, we can give. At least, you know, he's not another Roger. Meaning? Well, meaning that there are certain people who just seem to be born to cause other people anxiety, and Roger's one of them. And with someone like that, I mean, there's no debate. You just stay away from them or you drive yourself nuts. Maybe that's what I am for Daniel. What if I... Was I very neurotic when we were together? No more so than I. <laughs> I thought that was our charm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just need to know if I'm causing this. Or if Roger's made me so gun-shy I can't trust anybody. Well, Roger makes everybody gun-shy. Come on, big deal. Yeah. I mean, you've known that about him for a long time. That is no reason yeah. that you can't have a real relationship with Daniel. You're home? Yes, I'm home. I uh, came home to eat lunch. I, I came to get the Christmas platter. So, have you set a date yet? Excuse me? For the wedding. Oh, uh, yeah, sometime in the spring. Not really sure. Well, I guess I, uh, better get back to work. Bye. Oh. Listen, don't worry. What did she want? Today, the part of A.C. Mallet will be played by James Carroll. Thank you, Susan. Hey, look. Yeah, it looks good. You can pickle. Yeah, well, boss likes pickles. Gotta keep them happy. You're a lucky man to have someone so dedicated. Well, I'm the one who's lucky. I'm expecting an affidavit from New Orleans. Would you mind checking to see if the mail's here yet? And I'm gonna need that Connor file to... You mean Turner? Yes. Turner, sorry, I don't know where my mind's at. Thank you. Well, there's no mistake about it. Prints were all over Gene Wetherill's gun, which means they must have been in pretty close contact. I cannot believe that it's Suzanne. Her real name's Wendy Sinclair, and she has some background with a branch of U.S. intelligence. The same branch as Thorpe. No, no. Hey, it's a sense they're connected. Roger planted someone in my office, ultimately in my home. That's what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. What's she heard? I don't know. Well, think back, man. It's important. Well, that's so hard to say. I mean, I've been careful. But I mean, for heaven's sake, she's here. She must have heard a lot of things. Well, it's done. I mean, at least now you know. Yeah, now I know how stupid I can be. Nice-looking woman. Gives a good massage. 
It was never like that. It's, I just thought I had a great legal assistant who needed to break, but now I think about it, everything she told me was probably a lie, from the broken-down car to the ailing mother. Look at that. You know, now that you're the DA, you can't be such a nice guy. The thing to do is to use what we have now. The thing to do is prove that she's connected to food. Yeah, but an investigation, that's going to take too much time. Roger picks up on it? Yeah, beat her at her own game. But the question is, what does Roger really want to hear from her? You haven't answered my question. Who are you afraid of? I just want some privacy. So that's easy to attain. Just move out. Oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Well, I would too. But no job, no prospects. What's a girl to do? I'm sure your father would float you alone. There's not a lot he wouldn't do to get his women away from me. Well, Dad's in hock up to his eyeballs. All he has left is the sta half the station. He has ways. He likes people to think that. But the truth is, you're stuck with me. For now. Why don't you take my place? Look, I stay here most of the time anyway. I'll put some of my stuff in storage. I'll even cover the rent. <laughs> oh, once again, you are just too kind. I couldn't do that. Sure you could. In fact, I insist. I think it's about time, Blake. I mean, you are a big girl now. You know, I think Mom really likes it because we get to catch up on the quality time we missed as I was growing up. Your mother needs some time alone, some privacy. Then why don't you move out? Because I belong here. I'm marrying her. Have you set a date? No, not yet. <laughs> then you'll have plenty of time. I think it'll do us all good. I'm marrying your mother and there's nothing that you or your father can do about it. I'm in her life now. Her life? doesn't want you here. She never said anything like that to me. Because she's being polite. I am sorry if you have such a difficult time dealing with this. She confided in me. She told me that you were admitted to being jealous. Of her? Of us. Hey, it's understandable. Let me look at you. you got no life to speak of. You're alone. You have no job. Your mother's a very tough act to follow, but Blake, you're going to have to get over this competition thing. You're absurd. Am I? I noticed the way you looked at me when I first came around. Now, I didn't pay any attention to you. I cannot believe you are saying this. Blake. And the longer you stay around here, the more confused you're going to be. No, I'm not confused. I see very clearly, Daniel. And I see that you're a little man trying to play I'm hero sorry. to my mother. I'm sorry if I have upset what you. What about those obscene phone calls? Switching the tapes that day? What was on those tapes? Nothing, okay? Oh, you're not very good at it, are you? Trying to cover the big This is not lie. But we all know what it is. Don't Enough! I want you out of here. Away from your mother and me. Why? So you can kill her too? Um, would 
you prefer? I mean, the top or the bottom? Huh? I mean, the bunk bed. The kids took this one, so... Oh. I understand that the top bunk is supposed to be the... Uh, uh yeah, well, uh... My real estate. I guess, uh, the top... Uh, oh, I, I mean, unless that you prefer it. I don't know what I like. I've never slept in the bunk bed before. <laughs> well, then you better take the bottom in case you need to get up. Uh, okay. Um, you can get that, can't you? Yeah. You just have to get the right kind of grip on it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, uh, supper. Yeah. I'm going to start in on the, uh, the supper. Well, this is old, but it works like a champ. And I brought some stuff for some stew. We're just going to need some firewood and some water. Okay, I'll get, I'll get the firewood. No, I'll get the firewood. You get the water. All right, I'll get the water. Well, I'm going to get the water. Oh, no, no, we're going to need more water than that. Here, here, here. Oh, no, this is going to get pretty heavy. Are you sure that That's you can... fine. I can carry my own weight. I'm just going to freshen up first. Oh. Not the truth. You have no right to spread these accusations. You are playing with a man's reputation, with his life. And you're interfering with mine again. This is not just about you. Not anymore. Okay. Listen to this. I'm going to marry this guy no matter what you say, no matter That's what you... That's your prerogative. Say. Damn right it is. But I want Blake out of the house. Oh, this is ridiculous. Look, she can't stay there now that she knows. Why are you doing this? Why am I asking? You just can't stand it that he beat you. That he bought the station and that he's got me. Oh, no. It's nothing to do with me. Right. Just ask her to move out. Well, I'm surprised she's not packing her things as we speak. After you told her she's living under the same roof with a killer. That is what you said? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And she still wants to stay. Now, what does that tell you? It tells me that she's worried about her mother. That she doesn't want to leave you alone with Daniel in the same house. Now, you got it now. She's trying to protect you. Well, that is the sweetest thing I have heard from her in a long time. Too bad she's completely misguided by you. Okay, so Roger planted Suzanne. She's been feeding him information about our progress on the case. This may be our chance to catch him with his guard down. We give her some false information, hope that he gets careless. Or she could lead us to something that could hang them both. How do you feel about that? with Roger. Whatever happens to her, she deserves it. Also about your niece, I think she's still running after this St. John guy. You better put the clamps on her. I will. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? No, that's all right. Detective Mal, it was just sleeping. Well, I just want to return your law book. I have a question about McCloskey versus... Yes, Sam, before we get into that, I have 
have something important to tell you. Why don't you sit down? It's about the Gene Weatherall case. so hard on you the other day. That's all right. I'm, I just felt like you weren't listening to anything I had to say about Gene's death. Yeah, I know, and now I want to explain why. So do you think you... Sammy, I'm sorry, but I came down so hard on you the other day. That's all right. I'm, I just felt like you weren't listening to anything I had to say about Gene's death. Yeah, I know, and now I want to explain why. So did you learn something new about Gene's death? Normally, I wouldn't reveal this kind of information, but things are going to start happening so fast, I don't want there to be any mistakes. I have to rely on your discretion, the both of you. Yeah, of course. Detective Mallet has come up with some hard evidence. It seems that Daniel may be our man after all. Finally, you believe me? But what did he find? You don't need to know the details, just that there might be an arrest very quickly. And Sam, don't be confused if the investigation seems to be focusing elsewhere. So, have you completely eliminated all the other suspects? Yes, pretty much so. Why? I just thought you had some pretty incriminating evidence about someone else. All circumstantial. We now think that Daniel is trying to throw us off the scent. So you're going to pretend to pursue these other leads? Exactly. Sammy, I know how frustrating it must have been to think that nobody was listening to you. Oh, it's all right as long as you know now. I'm sorry I didn't trust that you knew what you were doing. Did I miss anything up? Daniel doesn't suspect a thing, and I want to kept that way. Yeah, at this point, you don't want to do anything to alert him. Suzanne's right. Stay away from him. Don't muddy the waters. Yeah, that won't be hard. So, be relieved when this whole thing's over, huh? We're all eager for that to happen. Is there anything I can do to help? Not yet. No, not with this. I will be needing that uh, Turner appeal, though. Sure, the, uh, the file's at the office, but I can just run over and get it. Okay. You don't mind? No, not at all. I tell you what, there's, uh, there's some dessert in the fridge, some lemon cake, so if you guys want to, you can just go ahead and help yourself. Uh, are you sure that you don't want us to wait? Oh, no, really, this uh, could take a while, so you can just go ahead and help yourself. I knew my gut was right about this. The only thing I trust my gut to tell me these days is when I'm hungry. All right, I'll see you later, then. She knows everything about me now, and she's fair. <laughs> Mom's fair with herself. I guess that's what keeps her so youthful. But what if she changes her mind? What then? You really think she needs protection from me? I have work to do, as amazing as that sounds. I know you don't want to hear this. Maybe you can't. But I don't think you're asking yourself the really hard questions here. Such as? Such as? How Gene's story came to be aired on Daddy's TV station. Who has the most to gain from my problems? The way I see it, we're talking about a jealous ex-husband who'd go to any lengths to smear me. And when it didn't work, because there was no crime, Daddy needed a real crime to frame me. So, he created one. You're saying my dad killed that woman at the country club? Think about it. I mean, who has more to gain, really? I know is I'm not leaving. Excuse me. Sammy, 
something. Okay. Do you think it's ever going to get warm enough in here so that we can take our coats off? Oh, yeah, sure. Before you know it, this place will be so cozy and toasty that all you want to do is just put your feet up and doze off in front of the fire. What's this? This is Patrick's Law. You braise the beef very slowly. You add the red wine, tenderizes the meat, and covers up all the mistakes that I'll make. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh. You were the one who said we were roughing it. You know, what you're describing sounds an awful lot like Bleu Bourguignon to me. Stomachs don't rough it. Fletcher's Law. <laughs> <laughs> I like that law. <clears throat> oh. You, uh, you take Ben out, I mean, away from the town often? Oh, yeah, sure. Every chance we get, we come here. We have some of our best times here. Mm -hmm. No TV. No video game. Yeah, we take long walks or call it a ski lift. Or sometimes just lazing around here in front of the fire. Sounds so nice. Yeah. Bill and I had some nice times like that at Cross Creek, but, but now that I'm alone, I mostly stay in town. I really do miss it. So now you're here. Yeah. You know, I think that you're so easy with Ben. Well, you've been a very busy lady lately. No, no, it's just that I keep on swimming upstream. I keep trying to take my son to cultural events. Stick with the sports for now. Waverly begs for ballet and opera. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. You know what? You're right about something else, too. Come on. Finally warm enough in here so I can take my coat off. about getting married again. She has reservations. Oh, my God. Tell me why I'm not surprised. <clears throat> and so she came to our kitchen, where life is bliss, to get advice from the master. Well, anybody that can help get that event scheduled has my blessing. <laughs> I have been trying to get that woman to set a date for weeks. Have you? I think I've noticed that. So was Holly. Well, I mean, there are lots of things to be done, you know. Well, you see, that's it. When you start planning things, it suddenly makes it all concrete. You don't think Holly wants to get married? I have no idea what's going on in Holly's mind. But Daniel is perfect for her. Holly is the most needy woman in the world, and Daniel wants to spend his entire life taking care of her. I mean, he, he already is. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes I wonder what Holly really wants. Dr. Donaldson, I'm sorry to intrude with such a painful subject, but I've heard many things regarding the death of your wife, Carol, both from her sister, Jean Weatherall, who died here recently, and from a man named Dr. Daniel St. John. As their stories differ on many points, and since I'm the manager of the local television station in Springfield, with whom Jean was working, I feel responsible for determining the truth. To that end, I'm writing to ask if you would please meet me at the time and place of your cheerly, sincerely, Holly.
What about this? Don't know what anything to do with Vanessa. I follow it over and over. You don't know what it's like for me trying not to notice things. Like that time at Cedars, you called me Vanessa? I never called you Vanessa. When Dylan got injured at that construction site, Buck H.B., he'll tell okay, you. Okay, so, so what does that prove? I'm tired of it, Billy. Now, if you would treat me, my fans are waiting. Excuse me, can I uh, have a word with you, Joe? Sure. Excuse me. Um, well, it's Nadine's big day, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Look, could you do me a favor and uh, just keep an eye on Nadine? Don't let uh, Roger push her around. Billy, I don't know what Nadine's been telling me. Well, she didn't have to tell me anything. I got the picture. Now, listen, Roger's my boss, too. And he's been very fair with me, and he's pretty well liked around here. Nadine's just going to have to fit in. Fight over her. How could you possibly let the woman sink to these depths? From this moment on, you butt out. I will stay involved with your wife as long as she needs me. Who the hell do you think you are taking over this way? You have failed miserably. You blow it. You stay out of our lives. We gave.
leather gloves by pounds. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.